So to make sure that you have the yeah, give me it. Yes, Max already did on the Saturday underscore class channel. Uh, scroll up. There's a. Uh, uh, there's details about it. From Max, he has a uh, image like this on the stack, Saturday underscore class. Stack channel. Oh, this here. No, no, Christine, did you find it? It's on Slack. Are you on the, the Saturday class? Slack. Yeah, I just see the video. Uh, I don't know. Oh, they want us to make it. Oh, they want us to make it. Guys, you have to make it. Well, I can I was thinking. Yeah, you can do with the bio too, like the homework. Uh, yeah, you're supposed to make one and you can go to staff. Oh, homework too? Oh, okay. Yeah, well, uh, yeah. we haven't gotten that far. That's the end of the class, so I don't know what you're talking about. I No, not right now. Eventually, yes. Right now, no. You don't need it. JavaScript. Um, yeah, if you are using the component. Remember I was telling you in the Bootstrap documentation, they have a section where they say why you require. If you are using one of those, then you need it. But for any of those exercises, homework, you don't, okay. don't need to worry about it. So for Java, so they have their own JavaScript too. Um, kind of, yeah. So JavaScript <laughs> is for your actions. So they have a JavaScript file. There's no classes in JavaScript. A JavaScript file that kind of performs those actions. The carousel thing, it kind of rotates, right? The images come and go. HTML and CSS kind of difficult. 
So you have to write some JavaScript code so that it happens. And that's why they're saying you can. Yeah, yeah. If you have any action, then you need JavaScript, other jQuery in JavaScript, otherwise you don't need it. These are kind of static pages, so you don't need it. Jeff, are you looking for a TS? Uh, Trevor? Thank you, Trevor. So this image is also on
I think that eraser is almost dead. <laughs> I know, I was going to do it with my save, but I said you need that. I keep forgetting to bring one. I have an extra one at home. <laughs> I'll do more. Uh, it seems like a place. Like, 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 Okay, just a time check in one minute, we're going to move on to the next one. So, yeah. Um, so let's make sure it's coming to a good stopping point. Uh, again, the exercise is of course not for 15 minutes. It will take more time. Uh, but th that's how uh, the exercises are. I'll pose the solution. The only thing is, if you get the idea, you are able to do a container, it will be at least do a row, columns, it should be good, all right? Uh, we'll have time towards the end. If there is time, you guys can work on it again, but we have uh, two more topics to cover. Okay, well. All right, uh, let's go ahead, guys. Uh, we have a couple of more things I want to show you guys. 
All right, uh, let's go ahead and uh, close your laptops, uh, focus time again, and then we'll come back to those activities. Okay. So basically, you guys getting the hang of it, how the containers <coughs> work. Um, I showed you the code, and then you guys kind of tried it on. All right, guys, ready? So you guys kind of getting the hang of it. Uh, I showed you the code, and you guys kind of got a uh, hands on in it. It's once you get the concept, it's it's a little bit learning curve, but you know once you realize what's happening, it's a pretty cool thing, right? You don't have to worry about all the other stuff, right? So here, what I'm going to do is uh, let's suppose we have a, a requirement for this thing. I'm going to code it out in front of you guys, uh, show you how to come to this page. There are a few more exercises you guys uh, will do if you have at the end. But I'll post the exercises towards the end of the class. Uh, but let's suppose I want to make this website, right? Um, nav bar, I'm going to ignore the nav bar from my grid system, okay? And then I have these awesome stories and these things. So coming to the wireframe, how many rows do I have? One, two, three, four. I'm going to start with four rows. And within the first row, I don't have anything. So I'm going to expand it to all the 12 columns. All right, pretty straightforward. Second, I have two, so I'm going to kind of divide these into two parts. Uh, looks like uh, 25, 75%. I could start with a three and a nine. See, you guys getting hang of, hang of it, what I'm talking about, three and a nine, three column, with a nine column. I can do the same thing over here. And then I have these three um, columns at the bottom. We'll, we'll see how to kind of get those two. But eventually, these are still columns within a row. OK? So let's go ahead and I'm going to start on this one. So I already have this template built in uh, to just save some time. All right, so I have a link, uh, CSS. Now here's the thing about the nav bar. Uh, if you look at CSS, they have like all this uh, different kind of nav bars, like this one, if you want this one, they already have the code. So I'm not going to worry about uh, how to create a nav bar because it's already there, the code is there. I'm just going to copy the one that I like and put it on my website. Right. So, how do you like change the, the length? Page one, this thing? Um, the text? Come on, don't ask me that. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> I was like, what? No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I did this. Um, I did a nav bar. Okay, straight forward. I just copy this. Literally, I, this is the one I wanted. I did it. You don't have to worry about it anymore. Okay, now we come. Huh? Yeah. So everything is built in for you guys. Okay, now the next part that I want to code is my container and all that stuff. Okay, so I'm going to start with, I'm going, I have minimized this so that I don't have to look at all this code I don't really care about. So I'm going to start with this. I have a div with a class uh, container. Okay, and I said I'm going to have four rows. So I'm going to just quickly code out four rows. Um, class row, okay. Second row, third row, fourth row. Okay. The format this looks nice. Okay. All right. Let's start with the first one. Uh, first one in my first row, I just want a uh, text, awesome stories, and kind of outline. <coughs> Um, again, this uh, this comes with when you guys are working on your uh, next homework and activities. You know, you will see what you're trying to do. So the best one, if you see, is this card. <coughs> All right, um, card kind of looks similar. They have a nice outline, okay. But they have these two things. I don't want the image. I don't want this. I don't want this. What what I can what what would I have to do? I can start with this code and remove the stuff that I don't want. Right. This kind of tells you that. You only pick up things that you want. So um, let's start with the. I, I was, I'll start with the card one. I don't need the title, and it looks like I need the card body. Okay. So let's start with uh, um, div. Okay, and 
maybe use the class card okay and then in the class card looks like I need a body so I'm going to class the car dashboard okay okay and in this um, I want okay so what am I what did I do wrong over here Mm, not really card card uh, well, we can render uh, and see what happens to the card without the card there's no column excellent so I started with the container I started with the row I didn't put in the column all right so I need to start with a column so I'm going to just uh, cut this and I'm going to start a class of column how many do I need 12. I'll start with large. So um, what does this translate to? That on the bigger screens, yeah, on the bigger screens keep it uh, 12 columns. Anything that is small kind of stack, starts stacking in the middle. Okay? I'm not care, I don't care about medium. My website should be stacked up uh, unless it is 1200 pixel width or not. Okay? So let's go back and see how it looks like. Okay? And this is how it shows up. See, I extracted the same code. Again, card is built for card, but you know, you have a flexibility. You can change whatever you want. I wanted a text box with this outline. I saw something and I copied it, kind of changed it. Okay. Um, let's test it out. Well, this is still going to be, I can't test it because there's, it's spanning 12 columns. There's nothing to stack up, so it's going to stay the same. Okay. So let's go to the uh, <coughs> next. Uh, so this row is done. I'm going to minimize this. Let's go back to this one now. So this one, the requirement is I have two, three, and nine. Okay, so let's go ahead and start with those columns first. Um, div um, class column dash three. And the next one is going to be nine. Oops. Column three, uh, let's make this large. Okay. Uh, it does not, thank you. It does not? It does not, yeah. Why it does not? Because this is the class name that they have defined, so they wouldn't know. Okay, the so casting up fast. I can't even make a mistake. <laughs> all right awesome so now we have columns so this is how you see the coding style i start with the basic stuff first i create a container rows and then i do the columns it's kind of easier this way i know i don't have to now worry about columns and anything now it's all the content right okay so it says uh, let's see if there's a uh, um so let's, um, I want an image over here. So let's go ahead and I'm going to use the image tag. Create forward, okay. Uh, I'm going to give a source. So remember from the previous one, there was a placeholder source which shows you that those uh, gray picture boxes. I'm just going to go to that site and get a small, let's yeah. call it placeholder. Placeholder. Okay, um, now I want to use the Bootstrap thumbnail. Um, I'm going to just copy it from Bootstrap side. They have a thumbnail images class. Let me format it and then we can talk about it. Okay, so again, the more important part is the the grid system right these things are again look in the documentation the, if you just search thumbnails they have examples how to use it how the class i right? just i'm literally just copy pasting the classes over here right um and there it is so my next one kind of shows up there okay 
Um, the remaining nine columns, I want uh, text. So, um, what do, what would I do here? I'll start with the H two. Okay. Um, the, I'm just going to copy this text from the so the greatest website ever made. Yeah, the next one was uh, T tag. I need to copy what they want. Format this. Okay, and this is how I get it. So on big screens, I want it to be this, and then on smaller, medium, it should like stack up. What was that? Yeah, how would you do it? Yeah. Yep, you got it. Yeah, create a new input. But yes. Hold on, let me complete that thought. So, uh, because in this is the requirement, right? So, this I'm following this requirement right now, so that's why I'm a requirement. Yes. No, 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 there's nothing such as row one, row two. Okay? This is the exact class name. Go one, go to one word. It won't even render. Yes. Which one? This one? Yep. Yep. The bootstrap comes with its own defined width and padding, you see? It's already adding. If I do an inspect and see, it's adding this padding by default. And the padding on the image well. also. Yep. That's what I was saying. Good question. So again, you don't have to worry about the padding, everything bootstrap. But if you are interested, if you want to do it, then yeah, look at the code. And that's what I was saying. Uh, a lot of companies they take bootstrap and and uh, customize it, right? They didn't. Maybe this is too much padding. I don't want that. So they will go and change the bootstrap code <laughs> because it's open source. You can download, modify it, and use it. Or What's the other way? Write your own style of CSS and go like this. No, no, there's nothing in such a way. The overriding, by I mean, is you create a new style of CSS and use the same property. Okay, uh, let's look at the. Okay, so the uh, I'm going to jump ahead and I'm going to do the last one. So let's look at the last one. I wanted um, there's a couple of ways um, you can you can either uh, how would if I, if you do it like in columns you would have to do like columns and then kind of put white spaces also. I'll show you a little bit easier way. Again, it's it's all um, what you're trying to do and how you want to do it. You could do that way also, and we kind of already know that. Right? I create columns and kind of put it over there, right? Um, but this is since like a small thing, I still need the column. So let me go ahead and create a class column large 12. Okay, and I'm going to use the card. You see, I want kind of this thing, right? So I'm going to use the same card and I'm going to just put images inside it. So. So it was uh, div. I'm going to use the class. I started with a card, and then I need a card word. Okay, and this is kind of a syntax from Bootstrap. If you want to use a card, it has to start with a card and a card body. That's how it is written. So I'm just uh, looking at their documentation and following the same thing. Class, and then I have a card. Okay. Um, now within my so this comes in. That's what I want. Then I want uh, three images. So let's uh, get some stock images. This. Okay, so my images are kind of coming over. 
Now, if I, I could do the column part and add spaces, that's another way. Um, there's a, in the card body, they have a um, text uh, center class. I think they have, yeah, they have more text center, text left. Kind of person in there. So there again, uh, the purpose of showing me showing you this, and then if you want to add spaces, you can add empty rows to kind of expand it out. Uh, the purpose of this was we started with a grid system. When you're using Bootstrap, again, this part comes with practice. As you are mo using more components of Bootstrap, there are a lot more. I cannot go over each one. I don't even know each one of them, right? But if I have something in mind, I will Google something. Okay, I want a card. Then I look at the card body text and see what uh, CSS they are using. Kind of develop and come to this point. Again, uh, this only comes with practice. Keep practicing those components, and you will kind of start visualizing what component you want to use, right? If I see this, okay, uh, I've used the card one, kind of seems similar, and those kind of stuff. Yes, please. Um, can you see that um, visual yeah. Right, I put a text centered, so everything within it kind of centered. Okay, again, uh, this is, I'm going to post this uh, solution, it will be on GitLab, all right? So you guys can see it and give it a practice. Towards, uh, I'm going to complete one more lecture and then there are two activities. In one activity, I use the card intentionally because the next activity tells you guys to use the card, so you guys kind of have an idea where to look. And, uh, I'll cover one more topic, which is media queries, and then you will have two exercises. Okay, this is okay. Everybody kind of getting hang of it now. How to use Bootstrap? Mm -hmm. uh, okay. At any point, you can you can override the automatic formatting by adding your own. Um, yeah. Style yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yes. Oh. Um, yeah, that's a good, let's, let's try that. Yeah, you can really do that. I wonder if it, but I wanted this to be in a new section. Let's see what happens if I add over here. So Jeff is saying if I just add a text center here, right? Yeah. That also works, kind of saves your day. Right, it's a, it's auto refresh, it should work. Yeah, I have it on, a, a, you see open live server, if you're not using, you see less clicks, I just, I don't even have to do anything, it like renders automatically. Uh, open live server. We can. I can talk about that after the class. Remember on the first day. Yeah, first day I told you about the open live server. So I can talk about after class. Okay, everybody good with this? All right. So the next topic is. We'll come back to this activity. Uh, before we go on to the next one, uh, some of the questions I have already answered. Can you use more or less than twelve? Uh, yes, you can. Technically, you shouldn't. Right. You can do everything, but you shouldn't be doing some things, all right? So can I do it? Yes. Should you do it? No. Simple answer, okay? And you see the reason now, right? Right. Why would you destroy your layout with just such nice and all they're asking is, guys, just do 12 bits. That's all they're asking, okay? So I'll stick to those uh, kind of rules and you should be good and you should be able to create web pages pretty quickly, all right? Are you pretty good? Uh, all right, this topic is going to be a little bit crazy. So I showed you the Bootstrap side of it, okay? Now, uh, Bootstrap, I said, behind the scenes is always using CSS, right? Pure CSS. They are probably doing it some other way. And why, how they are doing it? Um, again, this is good to know. And I like to tell this because, um, let me open this up. As engineers, um, I get it. There's a third party library, it does everything. But I want to kind of know, okay, how it is working on the background, okay? So how it is working on the background is what we call media queries. And this is the, uh, this is one of the more sore topics that give a sore to engineers or especially if you're doing it. Media queries is the ability to kind of make your website responsive. But it is also kind of a tricky because you have to handle everything on your own, right? Bootstrap is kind of doing all your things, right? With, like, and everything. But if you have to write pure code, everything goes in your media code. You have to handle all that stuff, okay? 
Um, I'm going to show you some basic examples, how to write the syntax and how to use uh, media query. So this will give you an overview of what is going on in the uh, behind the scenes. Uh, but later on, if you want, uh, please, well, not want, please go ahead and, you know, a little bit do some research, look at some more complicated code um, so to understand what exactly is going on. Okay, but to get you started, I'm going to show you how media queries work. All right, uh, let me go ahead and create a new media queries. All right, you see the style.css I created, this should give you an indication I'm not going to be using Bootstrap. All right, now we are looking at pure CSS and see how that works, okay? Uh, I don't need this, let me close this. Oh, come on, I did the same thing last time. <laughs> Why is it not working? Okay, uh, style or CSS, all set. Okay. So let's look at, um, let me make some, uh, Let's just make some like P's. All right, so start with a A and this one. Which one? Uh, media queries demo. Okay. And then let me create a P class. Uh, the window. This should resize based on breakpoints. Okay. Uh, format. Let's make sure this is okay. So right now, this is just a simple uh, HTML. I haven't added any CSS over here. Okay, so for, uh, what my purpose is, I'm going to resize this based on the window size, okay? Um, when the size changes, I'm going to do some properties. Uh, for now, I'm going to do is what I'm going to show is I'm going to change the colors, all right? But again, it's the same thing. You can add any property to it, all right? Uh, colors is easier to visualize. So that's why I'm going to start with that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a CSS class. I don't have it defined, but I'm going to complete my HTML so I don't have to worry about coming back over here. So my intention is I have to create a CSS file with the name example, and it should work on this one. Okay, everybody good? Now we go on to the uh, CSS part. This is what I called it, all right? Um, let me um, add some padding to it. Okay, so I'll show you that why I start, I'm going to start with a white color so that uh, when the color changes, you guys can see it. But the text is there, it's just white color, okay? All right. So this is my basic um, uh, CSS, and based on the size of the window, I want this CSS to change the color. Okay, again, the purpose of this exercise is that this is my basic CSS, but I want to change the properties based on the uh, size of the window, right? And that's what Bootstrap is doing, right? Your size changes, your class changes, okay? So the syntax is at media. Okay, uh, definition says this is a media queries, and this syntax always, always goes at the end of your CSS. When you have written all your CSS, at the end, you're going to add this, right? This is the rule, it's, it has to be at the end. Media uh, only screen and something. We'll come back to this. All right, so what is it saying? Again, this is the exact syntax, media only screen. All right, 
uh, by syntax, I mean this is the coding uh, syntax. If you want to use media queries, this is what you have to write. Right? That's that's the way. If you don't follow this, it's not going to render properly. Right? Uh, basically, what it is saying that you know, come to the screen and do something. Right? Now, this condition that goes in your parentheses, that's what that that is the one that is going to uh, change the screen and call this uh, uh, CSS. Okay. okay Right now it stays blank. There's no change because I haven't completed this. Oh. Yes. What did I do over here? I said run this block of code when the maximum width of the screen is 576. Right? So it is going to keep running this code for any value that is less than 576, right? What is saying? Start from zero, there's no zero, but from zero to 576, uh, run this piece of code, all right? Now, what is that piece of code? I haven't written, but anything that is now I'm going to write, that's going to execute, that's going to run, every time this condition becomes true. And when will this condition become true? from 0 to 576 pixels, which is like a phone, right? Small phone. <coughs> what am I doing? I already have a CSS defined, right? I'm saying call the CSS override it. Remember the reset part? <coughs> this is the same thing over here. It is going to override the property, not the parent, just the color. Oh, not even the color. I'm just changing the background. Background will still be uh, red. The text would be white. Okay, so I'm going to change the background color. You can override it also. Let's see what happens. What is it? Yes, yes. Uh, maximum width, yeah, less than equal to 576, yeah. You see what happened? As soon as this reaches 576, CSS executes. This is what is going behind the scenes. Now, what Bootstrap does is more complicated stuff. You guys can look at the code. It takes the width, sets the width, and height, and all that stuff. But basically, the concept is this is what is going on. Let's see, let's create a few more, okay? Um, um, you can, yes? Right, because what did I say? When the maximum width, stop this, the condition is maximum width. So it will only work from zero to 576. When I extend it, what is happening? My, this condition is becoming false so that's why it doesn't work so let's let's try to fix those so you can add more uh, media queries and that's what bootstrap also has same syntax and okay now what i want to do um let's add this uh the next is uh, minimum width Where are these conditions coming from? Go back to the presentation. If you look at the box, I'm just copying them. Whatever Bootstrap is following, I'm following the same strategy. They have greater than 576, I put 5. They have less than equal to 576, I put minimum width of 576. Okay, what is minimum width? This means anything 76 and plus. Okay, 576 and plus. Well, uh, if they're sharing that uh, common 576 in threshold, should you make the no, it's a great, it's a, a equal to, and the minimum is uh, uh, just right. less. So it's already 577. Right. Oh, yeah, then you can agree with it. Right. Then it's both states at the same time. Uh, no, 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 that, that's what I said. So the condition <coughs> is uh, maximum width is greater than uh, or less than equal to 576, and the minimum width. There's no equality. There, it's just less than. Oh, okay. So it will, that gotcha. point is already included. In one, so you don't have to worry about okay. it. But a good question. Yeah. So let's go ahead and I'm going to uh, 
so what happened uh, minimum width is 570 so this will be true for any screens with minimum 576 up to infinity or whatever that is right so it keeps green 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 as soon as it hits the breakpoint oh why didn't it hit the big point what is it what was the comment we're saying no uh, well, so it is saying when the minimum width is 576 and then it is. So we, we didn't reach 576. 576 for small phones, right? Kind of this size. So it's working. Yeah, yeah, that, that's what happened. All right, so again, it's the same thing. Um, and if you right click inspect, you can see as soon as it hits 576, it's going to change the color to be. Now you can. Uh, you can keep going and uh, whatever bootstrap has it so what what would be the uh, next one they had is uh, let me look up seven seven sixty eight yeah, yeah seven sixty eight I see it right yeah so blue for bigger ones green yeah. right. you can keep going the next one would be I think they have 992 uh, all right but here's the point this is the easy example you can you see it's it's there's no change this is all your knowledge about CSS you are just putting the CSS class over it. you can have width padding margin whatever you want everything goes over here the only extra thing is you are saying that when you reach this pre point execute this CSS it's Right? right. When it reaches this one, it's this one. When it reaches this one, it's this one. So like not, not like power to change the color if the screen is wide. Yeah, yeah. This is just an example. Right. And this is what now if you think about it, what CS what Bootstrap might be doing, they have those dot call classes written, mm -hmm. exactly the same thing. Right. They have a media query and within that uh, small Excel they are checking if this is the condition, then execute this one. If this is the condition, this is they have a few more complex code about capturing the bits, but basically, if you open that uh, CSS file, this is what you will see. All right? Yes. That's the breakpoints. What is it? Does it do other things besides string width? No, it's it's this index is just for the screen width. Yeah. What do you mean other things? I don't know. Some other aspect. Oh. Uh, no, this is this is <laughs> this is mainly good question. This is mainly. Again, I haven't explored to see other things, but uh, I would just use it for this. But this is specifically for this. Again, uh, disclaimer, it's not present in the older versions of CSS. So we are doing CSS3. In CSS2, they had a different mode, but with mobile responsive and the uh, mobile phones coming through, uh, in the newer version, they have included this syntax with the CSS3. Um, if a question comes up in interview, somebody asks that, you know, how would I do it in CSS2? You are not going to do it this way. I don't know if they even have it, but this is more newer to CSS3. Okay, any other questions? Uh, I, I don't know. They have a different syntax. I would have to look it up. Yeah. I think they have a, I don't know if they have the media, but it's a different, a little bit different. I don't even know if, if it's possible. Uh, again, when CSS3 came about, it's more popular with the mobile phones and everything, so they might they might not even have it at that time. So I know that Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is not a media tag. When you say media tag, to my mind, this is what comes to my mind. Like HTML tag. And, and interesting, I think there is a media tag in HTML5. So now you're talking about this syntax, and you're saying what? Browser? It's, it's uh, irrespective of the browser. No, I was just going to what you said. And then there's a way to have the page which browser. Oh yeah, yeah. That's a that's a that's a uh, that's a different code. I don't think this code. Uh, I'll have to look it up, but I know what you're saying. That if it's IE, then do this. There's the conditions. Um, this is exact syntax only. Check. There might be a condition over here. I'll have to look it up because you see and and this is parentheses. You can put any condition. Right now we are uh, doing the 
screen and this. So that's why it's based on screen. There might be something for uh, if there's a browser detection here. I'll have to check that code. We can look at it and see. Uh, detect IE and it should be pretty straightforward. Isn't that reset? Uh, no, he's saying that um, if I want to detect that my site has opened on IE or Chrome or Mozilla Firefox. So reset is like removes everything. A little bit different. Yeah, yeah, I don't need this. This is uh, this is part of the CSS. Yeah, nothing, none of these. Okay. All right. So the part of this was I wanted to show you guys so that you guys are aware what is going on back behind the scenes and in your a bit of your homework. Also, I think you have to use media query. We'll see. These All right. are what you call the breakpoints, right? The yes. Break Remember, break I'm calling these breakpoints. These are your kind of standard defined breakpoints. Right. Again, can I put 770 over here? Yes, I can. I have a new breakpoint. But these are kind of standard ones. Again, you have the flexibility. You can put any breakpoint you want or um, any number. It will still work. Uh, I did this. All right. So, if you see this thing, uh, this thing is uh, really important. Uh, now, uh, Visual Studio kind of automatically adds it. It's not. Um, it's just something I would like to mention that you know this. This what it is saying is that your viewport, which is a browser, and then whenever you open your website, open the website with the width of your browser. So what, what it is saying is your co contents, it will automatically try to adjust your co contents if you haven't used any media queries, you haven't made it responsive. This tag is going to try it, its best to make it mobile responsive as much as it can, right? But if you haven't put in any piece of code, you know, it will try to do it whatever it can come up with. But if you are putting media queries, make sure you put in this tag so that it knows Okay, I have to run media queries and all that stuff. So this is kind of important. And with HTML5 and CSS3, since we have all that stuff, so they have kind of put start putting that in template. You don't even have to worry about it. But again, uh, there are things that I see and I try to find out what it is, and it helps you with the media queries and everything. All right, there's one example. Um, let's see if I can run that to show you the little bit difference. Let's see if this is the one. Okay, not this one. So, trying to show you the solve one which doesn't have the viewport. Okay, I'm going to comment this viewport and then I'm going to okay um, I don't know if you guys know so uh, Chrome also has a tool which is this second icon and it will render your web page on a selected mobile phone it's kind of pretty cool so if you click this you see it has options for Galaxy S5, Pixel 2, all these phones. Kind of cool. So you can actually yeah. see how it is. Right? right. So, so uh, quickly, so this is how it renders on your. Uh, this is how it is rendering without the viewport. I have taken the viewport out. It's trying to do its. You know, it doesn't do anything. Right? If I just uh, uncomment that part out. kind of changes its thing, right? And this is the example I posted. Uh, trust me, I am commenting it out and come. That's the only thing I do, all right? So this is, again, it's a really cool feature when you're developing a website, you want to test it out, you can uh, use this also, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I take out the viewport code, code, it kind of collapses. If I put in the viewport code, then it shows up nicely, yeah. And what it is saying, again, Viewport is saying when the, uh, it was introduced uh, when the iPhones came out, because when people are clicking website, it opens an uh, iPhone, 
if you don't have the viewport thing, what happens? Your whole website kind of opens up in this much phone, whatever space it is. Uh, for iPhones, what they did was they added that tag. So that tag tells that if it is a small size, like device, whatever the device width is, just open the page in that device width. Uh, it doesn't look nice. That's our responsibility as developers to make it fixed. But for normal, without any queries, this is how, by default, is going to try to do something. Now, All right. Yes. Since it's based on width, that is an automatic uh, formatting for orientation, right? Because yeah, yeah, yeah. So the device width right. goes. Back. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. It's the same condition because you see what the condition is. Whatever the width of the device is, use that. Width. Yeah. So if you do this, it becomes like this. Very cool. Okay. All right. So we'll do activities. But before we do activities, I want you guys. One of the tiers, if you guys can introduce the homework, the second one. Just show them what the second homework is. And then, yeah, we'll come back to the those two things. Oh, um, yeah, is it on? No, no, uh, it's already on GitLab. Just uh, I just want you guys to show them how what the instructions are and what they have. What they have. I'll, I'll talk right. to it. Yeah, just talk to it. I'll, okay. I'll show So for your second assignment, you've already created one portfolio. Uh, hopefully you guys made it to the recommended uh, thing of doing an actual portfolio. For the second assignment, you're going to do two portfolios. The first one is going to be done in Bootstrap. The <laughs> second one is going to be done with your own CSS. The point of it is that you're going to make your portfolio responsive. So you want to make sure that you've got your media query set up and basically make it look nice on a phone, a tablet, and on a regular computer. So you're going to want to really read up on the bootstrap documentation, kind of figure out how to do certain things in there, like uh, getting stuff to be sized properly. If you looked at the actual portfolio page where you have a tile for each project, you want to make sure that uh, that appears good on a regular screen and on a phone screen. So when we were covering cards earlier, that was kind of a hint. The card component is what you're going to want to shoot for for those portfolio tiles. Yeah. Okay. So is it it's just updating current with Bootstrap on current portfolio, or you make a new one in Bootstrap and then? So what you could do is take the first portfolio that you did, and then in the CSS file, you'll add those media queries. So create a new GitHub repo. You, know, you, you yes. still want to see it, because after six months, you will go back and say, hey, this is how I did it. Oh my god, why did I do that? <laughs> but but you know, I would create a new repo and do it. Yeah, and then the bootstrap one, you're pretty much going to be starting from scratch yeah. with that. OK. And then people who are uh, who did not get to the second part, the difficult one, whatever it is, the recommended one, I'm going to post a solution tomorrow, so that this would be this could be a starting point for your next assignment. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay, you can pick that solution and start working on the second one. Does it have to be? I mean, it can't be just content. Uh, you can put test content like some random text. Yeah. So yeah. Right, right. So again, uh, just to reiterate this, you can put any text, but eventually this portfolio by the end of six months is going to be the one that you would put it on your resume saying, hey, visit my portfolio page, because you will be able to deploy it in a Heroku cloud or somewhere so that everybody can access it. If you don't want that, it's fine. I've seen people go crazy by the end of six months with their portfolio pages. Like, they're super nice. Portfolio. So we can do as much or as little as we want. But yes. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure. Okay. Uh, any other questions on homework? So homework is due on uh, Monday and Tuesday, not next one. The following. All right. Um, what's the date on that one? Let's see. Twenty six. Twenty six. Okay. So Monday or Tuesday. Uh, those homeworks are due. Uh, second part. Uh, there's no class on Monday and Tuesday. So the next class would be on Wednesday and Thursday. Okay. What is it? Monday and Tuesday, there's no class, but Thursday, Wednesday and Thursday. Monday and Tuesday. Yeah, it's a President's Day.
<laughs> all right, uh, guys, uh, one more, a uh, couple of things, and then we'll finish up with that quiz. All right, uh, I just need you a little bit more focus. Okay, so I talked about the homework. Uh, I'm going to strike out some of the activities that we discussed, and you guys can uh, try it out. Uh, what else was there? Okay, so you guys know about the surveys that you take. There was some confusion last cohort, so I'm going to make it clear. Uh, every time, uh, even if I'm teaching Saturday or Matt teaches a Saturday when you take the survey, uh, Monday, Wednesday class, the survey is always going to be for Matt, and Tuesday, Thursday is always going to be for me. So I am saying that because, you know, I don't want to, if you guys didn't like my class today and you say, oh, bad, 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 it will go to Matt if you are Monday, Wednesday one. So I, will, I don't want to skew his results. I'm just letting you know. Um, uh, you can put comments or something, but that's different. But anytime you take a survey, it's always going to be your respective instructors. Okay? Um, that is all. I'm going to stack out the activities and... Uh, uh, the, the first activity is you, I showed you the layout using Bootstrap, so you guys give it a try. Basically, what you are trying to achieve is, <coughs> is it this one. This is the one that I made. This is what you want to achieve. So give it a try and see. I mean, this is like too much space. You know, make it better. Don't don't put it. Try to make it in the middle. But this is what you are trying to achieve: a nav bar, a little bit of the card. You know, this will help you in your uh, assignment also. So that's the activity and the second activity. Out. Yeah, they're going to slide these two out. All right, and the second one that they're going to slack out is not related to Bootstrap. It's the media queries that we discussed. Uh, it will give you insight how to do a little bit of debugging also. So the code that they will slack out is already has majority of the stuff. What you have to do is you have to fix uh, <coughs> fix that code. Let's see how it looks. So see what is happening. It kind of goes. So what what in the next exercise you have to figure out how to make it align properly and add some space. Right. If I think about it, this is easy. Add a padding between those two. All right. You see the background changes. Um, Create a media query where as soon as you hit a breakpoint, this one kind of changes the color, right? And this one, if you look at the code, what you would see is that they, uh, that they have defined the width using pixels, right? Remember what Bootstrap is doing? It's kind of taking, giving you percentages, all right? So what I think you have to do is instead of using pixels, you just have to say uh, width as 100%. So whatever the view is, is going to kind of make it nicer. Right. All right. These are just hints and give it a try. Look at the code. This is uh, this <coughs> would be you would have already like a, a something like this. This is what you will get. So you already have your styles and a lot of HTML code written. Just have to figure out over <laughs> here. Add a media query. Fix this media query. You see this? They are hard coding 600 pixel. We don't want that. We kind of put a percentage. That's what I was talking about. And then fix this media query to make it work. That would, That's the second assignment, right? I would say, uh, take a moment, look at the code, try to understand what the code is doing first. This exercise is as part of your debugging also. So somebody else has written this code and you're trying to see uh, what this is doing. All right, I'm like, well, what does, uh, what does this do? Let me comment this out and see. Why do they, why do they have this uh, padding or width over here, all right? So study the code, try to see what it is doing, and the fix is like probably like three or four lines and should fix it. Okay. There's no class on Monday and Tuesday. Yeah, so the next class will be on Thursday. Okay. Um, just one one last thing. One and this is this is also really important, guys. Alright. Alright, give me just 30 more seconds. Okay, so I'm going to tell you about next week. So next week, we are going to start looking into JavaScript, all right? JavaScript is my favorite language to whine about. <laughs> favorite, favorite language to whine about, right? But I'm still going to teach you, okay? It's, uh, it's not very intuitive. It's not very easy to understand. It has its own curves, all right? It, it's, it's kind of weird. Uh, but this, that is the language of the web, and we have to, as uh, engineers, we have to learn that. So, um, 
when we come on Thursday, my expectation is you guys are extremely familiar with GitHub, GitLab, everything. All right, HTML, basic HTML, all right? Uh, CSS, basic CSS, I'm not, I'm not talking about crazy floating and all this, but you know CSS. Bootstrap, you know the components, you know all those things. Grid system, you are familiar with it, you know good, you have a good handle of those things, right? The JavaScript code, I'm going to be concentrating on that. I'll be only talking about the JavaScript code. I will probably have templates. I'm going to be copy pasting the HTML and CSS. I will do the live coding for JavaScript, but these previous concepts, I cannot spend more time. Okay, so um, my concentration and focus with JavaScript, as I said, it's a, it's a difficult language to understand, especially with no programming background. Uh, this is okay, but when you will see JavaScript, it, it is totally, totally different with anything you have seen HTML, CSS. All right, we are now jumping into uh, other programming languages that you will see more often. Okay, so it will be really difficult <laughs> and on time press if I start spending my time saying, oh, what the bootstrap component is doing, because that's just a template. The main part, the crux would be in the JavaScript. Okay, so please, you have time. There's a break, so that's kind of good. Please make utilize that. Make sure you are familiar with bootstrap, grid system, because HTML part, I'm just going to be I'm not going to discuss, there will be a template made and we're going to be concentrated on the JavaScript part now. Okay, everybody good with that? Well, you don't have a choice, but. <laughs> <laughs> all right, th uh, that is all for today. Please work on that exercise. Uh, we'll be here at uh, 2.30 or so. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Have a good rest of the video. All right, awesome.